The Akara missile, a groundbreaking anti-submarine warfare system developed by Australia in the 1960s, remains a hallmark of Cold War-era defense innovation. Named after an Aboriginal term for throwing stick, Ikara was conceived in 1959 by Australia's Department of Supply to address the critical gap between advanced sonar detection ranges, extending up to 20,000 meters, and the limited reach of contemporary weapons like the British Limbo Mortar, capped at 914 meters. This disparity left naval ships vulnerable to sophisticated submarines, particularly Soviet ones prompting Australia to develop a system capable of delivering torpedoes at extended ranges. The project united the Aeronautical Research Laboratory for Missile Design, the Weapons Research Establishment for Propulsion and Guidance, the Government Aircraft Factory, EMI Litted, and over 200 subcontractors. Trials began in 1963 aboard HMAS Stewart, with production versions entering service on HMAS Derwent by 1966. Ikara's adoption by the Royal Australian Navy, Royal Navy, Brazilian Navy, and Royal New Zealand Navy solidified its global impact, establishing it as one of Australia's most successful defense exports. Ikara's design was revolutionary, offering a range of 10 nautical miles, doubling that of the U.S. ASROC system. Powered by a two-stage Marawa solid-fuel rocket engine developed by Bristol Aerojet Litted, it achieved speeds of 1,100 km per hour, accelerating to 713 km per hour in 1.96 seconds under 10.9 Gs. Its radio command link enabled mid-course corrections using real-time sonar data, ensuring precise delivery of payloads like the US Mark 44 or Mark 46 acoustic homing torpedoes or, in the British variant, a WE-177A nuclear depth bomb. The missile carried its torpedo semi-recessed, releasing it via parachute to preserve the acoustic seeker's functionality, allowing a circular search pattern to locate submarines. Operating at low altitudes, up to 300 meters, Akara minimized detection risks. Its variants, F1, F2, and F3, reflected technological advancements, particularly in fire control integration with sonars like the RANS Maloka system, enhancing targeting precision. Operationally, Ikara proved robust through extensive testing and deployment. From 1963 to 1965, trials included a Sea Venom aircraft at Woomera to validate torpedo release and Wessex helicopters to refine guidance transponders. The 1968 public firing from HMAS Perth off Jervis Bay demonstrated its reliability. The Royal Navy adapted Ikara for NATO, modifying frequencies for electronic warfare compatibility and enabling onboard payload swapping, unlike the RAND's ashore assembly. This adaptability made Akara superior to ASROC C, reducing engagement times against evasive submarines, which could move 700 meters during ASROC's 55-second flight. Submariners reportedly nicknamed it insufficient knowledge and random action, reflecting its threat. While no combat use is documented, Ikara's deterrent role was vital during the Cold War, when Soviet submarine fleets posed significant risks. Its phase-out by the RAN in 1991, followed by other navies in the early 1990s, stemmed from its reliance on the Mark 44 torpedo, with a limited 457-meter acoustic range, and incompatibility with heavier torpedoes like the Mark 46 or Stingray. The system's initial 13 control blocks, each over 200 kilograms, later reduced to three, also posed integration challenges on smaller vessels. Ikara's legacy transcends its operational life, offering enduring lessons for defense programs. The 2021 book Ikara, Australia's Cold War Wonder Weapon by Angus Brits, frames it as a model for self-reliant defense development, relevant to Australia's AUKUS guided weapons initiatives. Its technology influenced the Tirana target drone for naval training and its networked warfare concepts, integrating sonar, computers, and guidance, prefigured modern naval systems. Preserved at the Nepean Naval Maritime Museum and Australian National Maritime Museum, Ikara remains a point of national pride. No post-1991 developments have emerged due to its retirement, but its principles inform contemporary anti-submarine warfare such as the U.S. vertical launch ASROC. 
Ikara's development showcased Australia's industrial and scientific prowess. The Aeronautical Research Laboratory's aerodynamic expertise, paired with the Weapons Research Establishment's Marawa Engine and Radio Guidance, demonstrated interdisciplinary excellence. Collaboration with British Aerospace strengthened bilateral ties, with production at Bristol Aerojet Litton enhancing export credibility. Interest from Japan and European nations, though limited by cost and specialization, highlighted Akara's appeal. The British nuclear depth bomb option raised strategic concerns about escalation, though no deployment records exist. Integration with sonars like Maloka pioneered networked warfare, aligning with today's data-driven operations. Ikara's obsolescence reflects naval warfare's evolution. Multi-role platforms, advanced torpedoes, and missile-based systems like VL ASROC outpaced single-purpose designs. Its reliance on outdated torpedoes and bulky systems underscored adaptation challenges. Yet, its emphasis on range, precision, and real-time guidance remains relevant, influencing systems like the RAND's MU-90 torpedo. The program's public-private collaboration with EMI and subcontractors drove innovation under government leadership. Ikara's story also highlights Australia's strategic context. Developed amid Cold War tensions, it addressed the RAND's need to protect vast maritime approaches, particularly in the Pacific. Its export success bolstered Australia's defense industry, fostering confidence in homegrown solutions. The ACARA program's challenges offer additional insights. Its high development costs, estimated in the tens of millions, strained budgets, while its specialized role limited versatility. The nuclear option, though never used, sparked debates about Australia's non-nuclear stance, as the RAND did not adopt the WE.177A. Maintenance demands, particularly for early analog systems, posed logistical hurdles, though digital upgrades mitigated this. The system's phase-out coincided with broader naval modernization, including the adoption of helicopters for anti-submarine roles, which offered greater flexibility. ICARA's influence persists in Australia's defense ethos, emphasizing innovation and self-reliance. Current programs, like the Guided Weapons and Explosive Ordnance Enterprise, echo ICARA's ambition to build sovereign capabilities.